Hello everybody, my name is Stuart Jones, I'm in my kitchen in London in the UK. For assignment 6 I'm going to explain what an amplitude envelope is in relation to synthesizers and I'm going to demonstrate various configurations using Reaper. So let's go. So what is the amplitude envelope? Here's a synth. The sound is created from an oscillator which is passed through a filter before an amplifier shapes the volume over time. So the amplitude envelope defines how each generated node is modulated. There are four components of an ampli amplitude envelope. Attack time, this is the time the volume takes to go from zero to 100%. Decay time, this is the duration until the volume reduces to the sustain level, which is the volume at which the sound will persist until essentially the key is released. After which, release time dictates the time taken for the volume to return to zero. These four components can be adjusted to mimic the behaviour of real instruments. I'm now going to demonstrate some of these using a synth in Reaper. A switch envelope configuration is as its name suggests. The signal is either on or off. Similar to the sound of an organ or perhaps brass stamps where there's strong attack, continuous sustain and then a fast stop. Here's the synth. And here we have the amplifier envelope. So we have for the switch, attack is zero, decay of zero, sustain all the way up, and then the release time as zero. So on or off, let's have a listen. There you go. The percussive configuration is so called because it mimics percussive sounds like a plucked harp spring or a hit on a xylophone. After an initial pluck or hit, no more energy is added. So to synthesize this, we reduce our sustain level to zero and the decay time sets the duration of the note. So in our amplifier envelope, we set attack zero, D, we'll put it about here, and then sustain level is zero. Um, so let's try that. So if I hold the key, the note decays. But if I only tap the key, the uh, percussive sound is damped. And that's because we have the release duration set at zero. For a percussive sound that isn't damped, we just need to increase the release time similar to the decay so it sort of takes over when the key is released so uh, put that to there back right here so I'll tap the same key again and you can hear that now the percussive sound is being allowed to ring and fade The sustaining envelope configuration synthesizes the sound of bowed instruments or horns with a strong attack and a quick delay before settling into a sustaining state as more energy is added via the bow or blowing, respectively. Uh, so to mimic this, we have a short attack time. We'll set the delay to uh, decay sorry, to about this much. We can reduce it to make it punchier, but let's leave it at that for now. We'll set the sustain level around here, and release will keep about half. So let's have a listen. So when I hit the key, there's an initial sort of loud attack, and then it settles into a quieter sustain. The final envelope is the quirk envelope, so called because long key presses result in a short sound and short key presses result in a long sound. In the former case, the sound decays before the key is released, so the release time is irrelevant. In the latter, the sound hasn't decayed before the key is released, so the long release time kicks in. So for this, we have a very short attack time. Decay will set to about here. We'll have zero sustain level, and then we'll have a long release. So if I hold a key down, we should have a short sound. Uh, 
Now if I just tap the key, we should get a long sound. So I'm releasing the key before the decay has occurred or is, or is finished and therefore the release is kicking in. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I look forward to hearing your comments. See you later.